Bill Griffith, maybe you've heard, retiring tomorrow after nearly 40 years here at Channel 10. Tomorrow, Bill. <laughs> tomorrow. And, you know, of course, we're revisiting his biggest stories. The one that stands out most to Bill right here. And, of course, a lot of you remember this, too, his battle with male breast cancer. Yeah, it's such a rare disease among men. It was such a shock, you know, for me to get this. Very often fatal, so people were concerned. My diagnosis and my treatment, surgery and everything, happened started in the spring of 04. And I was still on the air during that, but it was the three months of chemotherapy that people seem to remember the most. I used my broadcast the last three days of May to reveal the news that I've been dealing with for nearly two months. By then, I had already been misdiagnosed twice, undergone a lumpectomy, which revealed the presence of the disease, and a mammogram, which confirmed it was only on one side, and a double mastectomy, which revealed the type of cancer and the fact it likely had not spread. Radiation wasn't required, so all that was left, the chemo. My boss and I agreed it would be best if I were off the air during that time, but he asked something unprecedented. Would I be willing to chronicle my journey on the 10 News website? I agreed, provided I could share my Christian faith, which I relied on to sustain me. My journal was called Bill's Battle with Breast Cancer, and as often as I was able, I wrote entries describing what was happening and how it affected me. I did make a brief appearance on the morning news midway through that summer of 04, bald head and all, to tell my co-anchor Lisa Lake and viewers how I was doing. And I eventually returned to the newscast full-time on September the 13th, three and a half months after beginning chemotherapy. The treatments took my hair, but added years to my appearance. I was delighted to be back on the air, but the journal was my major outreach. I was totally transparent through the highs and the lows, and people around the country and the world responded. And my peers responded. The San Diego Press Club honoring me with the Drew Silvern Award for Courage in Journalism. Truly a highlight of my career. I want to show you a little bit of the kind of reaction that I got. I don't trust keeping things on servers because they disappear. In fact, the journal is no longer exists on a server anywhere. It was eliminated. But here are copies of the emails that I got. I printed some of these out. I received more than 30,000 from literally every state in the country and, and many countries, in fact, as well. And I printed men and not kept them. I still plan at some point to, to respond to as many of these as I can. I was also blessed uh, the uh, San Diego Magazine named me uh, one of the 50 people to watch in 2005. And Magazine In Style uh, did this article on me and, and uh, the person who really was the hero in all this, and that's my wife, Jenny, who was my co-survivor and caregiver those four months. That's a and great And look at all these are cards, just some of the cards that I got from folks who, uh, who sent in these uh, wonderful cards, and I've kept them all. I'm going to organize them in retirement. That's <laughs> one should, of the you things should, you I plan frame to do. Some. You touched them, and they came back and touched yeah. you. Yeah, they absolutely did. Celebrating your career these last uh, few weeks, but also celebrating your life, Bill, thank especially you. today. Yeah, thanks. Glad to have you here, and congrats on retirement. You know, we're sad, but, you know, exactly. We should be congratulating this. Yeah. No, but, but girls, we've already talked this through. We're going to force you to come back and visit often. That's right. So it's I, not really I, goodbye. Okay, if you'll let me, I'll do it. <laughs> I like it. Like, bring all your dogs in. I okay. would love to meet all of them. You got oh, it. They're so cute.